Eric Mwadith, Mwadith.com, with U.S. market analysis for the weekend of April 1st and April 2nd, 2017. Let's take a look at markets here. What looks like right now with about two hours to go before the close of Friday's session, we can see for now looks like an unchanged day. Market's been higher. And we can actually see if you take a look at the NASDAQ, it came very close to its intraday highs. Let me show you that. You can see the intraday high for the NASDAQ, which was recorded on March 21st, 2017. And the highs for today's session, March 31st, 2017, we came off, could not capture that intraday high by about 25 cents. That's how close we get to this intraday high. Well, actually, the 52-week range is right here. This is the high, intraday high, all-time high for the NASDAQ as of right now. And if you take a look at the last time we made that intraday high, there was an intraday reversal here. And so we can see that we came close, just not able to tag fresh intraday highs. Since then, it looks like, in my opinion, looks like it is spooking people here that we've been unable to capture that intraday high. Markets coming off the highs. We shall see where we close. And even on this daily chart, you can see signs of a possibility here, depending on how we close. But looks like the market is making new highs while the RSI is making lower highs. So that negative divergence could set the stage for some type of a meaning, meaningful pullback. That looks like the case. And in fact, as I am recording this, I see the market dropping. We shall see where we close. And by the way, if you want this video to make sense to you, make sure you check out my weekend market analysis. So if we update this, we can see the market is now negative. In my opinion, looks like the formation of what looks like an improvement day to day. And yet we can see that the RSI is making lower highs. Again, that negative divergence sets the stage for a pullback as long as this is the case. Now, something else to consider is this daily closing high at the beginning of March. And the price level we were watching there was 5,904.03. So the market needed to clear this level if it was to see higher prices. We closed above that level yesterday. So yesterday was a breakout. But depending on where we close today, at the end of Friday's session, end of the month, if we are back below this price range, that might not be very encouraging for market bulls. So market bulls want, want to defend this breakout from yesterday. If the market can stay and close above this range, then the breakout is still in play. Failure to hold above 5904.03 might suggest that with a failed breakout, now we are looking at the potential for a reversal lower. Keep in mind, we've been watching the NASDAQ monthly chart and our conclusion here is as long as the NASDAQ is holding above 69.1 on the monthly, let's give this market the benefit of the doubt to continue moving higher. As you can see this good example here, once the NASDAQ moved above 69.1 here in mid to about April of 2013, the market stayed above 69.1 until here when it dropped during this month. So we had a nice multi-year rally while the NASDAQ's monthly RSI was above 69.1. So conclusion here is as long as this is the case, we have to give the market the benefit of the doubt. At some point, should we roll over and trade below 69.1? that's going to be suggestive that the market is now off this strong level and could actually be setting up for a pullback. Also on the weekly for the NASDAQ, let's watch this 69.1 level. The more the NASDAQ stays above that level, the more we continue seeing a strong to stable market. Keep in mind on the Dow, we continue watching the Dow. 
which has been above 69.1 since about November. So as long as that's the case, continues to be a stable to bullish market. In other words, pullbacks are going to be shallow as long as the Dow is holding above 69.1. Also, we have a possibility here. Now that we are having one down month, the month of March, the market has a chance now if it wants to, to break out in the coming months. The level to watch there for a monthly breakout is the close of February, which is a 20 thousand eight one two point two four so a breakout above that level is gonna be very very bullish if it happens on the weekly for the Dow need to watch this level here at RSI 69.1 right now we are seeing the Dow back below that level which might explain why we are not as strong as we've been over the last couple of weeks but the Dow could easily recapture the level above 69.1 and continue higher. On a weekly time frame, we need to watch the recent all-time weekly closing high because down the road should the Dow break out and that level is 21005.7. If the Dow were to break out above this all-time weekly closing high, that would be extremely bullish. And again, the key short term really is the level above 69.1. We stayed above it here in late November, which is this movement. Market has been above that level until recently when it dropped last week below 69.1. So if it can recapture the 69.1 level, that continues to be a very strong market, one that could actually see substantially higher price levels. Failure to move back above 69.1 might be a sign that the market is now ready for a pullback. If we take a look at the Dow daily, don't forget that we found support when we tested the 50 day moving average. All right, so the market would need to break that if it is gonna scare people out of their positions. You would also need to break below the RSI lows line. This daily support line came in play last week and we discussed this. Once the market bounced on this line, we can see a recovery in price. So at some point, if the market is truly going to go down, it needs to break below this line of support. If you take a look at the Dow hourly, mother.com subscribers know that we've been watching this line. Why? Because this is where the market's been stalling on a short term basis. And you can see here that hour to hour, actually we broke down here off the highs there. We struggle to move above the blue line here of the highs here and here. And over the last day or so, we've hit this line twice. And that's why we might be pulling back as of late Friday. Keep in mind, this line was also a good entry. Once we broke out above that line during this period, the market went higher. And again, after we broke down below the blue line is when we start coming off the highs. So this line has been relevant and continues to be relevant. If you take a look at the 30 minute for the Dow, we can see where the market's been struggling. And it's a simple line, this RSI breakpoint was the break. We break down here in early March off the highs. We draw a line from there. And since then, this has been the problem in the market. Every time we tag this line, we see that the Dow has been pulling back. We pull back here came close here for the highs there and over the last week every time the market tried to move higher it was stalled on this line so until the 30 minute can clear this resistance level we are looking at the Dow that is struggling to hold above this line if it can move above this line that would be bullish otherwise right now it looks like the market changed its makeup slightly to being sideways to down as far as the 30 minute is concerned Oh, and one side observation, one of the reasons why the market did see that short-term hourly pullback on Friday, I would explain that this way. It's the market coming back and moving below the RSI 50 level here. So this movement below 50 is the reason we get this relatively good size candle down. Oh, same thing also, RSI moving below 50, 
on the hourly for the Dow and also on the daily. So that explains why we are seeing a little bit of a pull lower because this movement below RSI 50 tends to bring a huge candle down. If you go back and check last weekend's market analysis video, we can see that the S&P 500 did exactly what we suspected it was trying to do in that the daily had broken out above this line, which is this movement in early November. And so we saw the market coming back to test this level. And we had a double bottom support. So we were expecting a market to pull back at, or to bounce. We got exactly that what we were expecting, which is this double bottom support was good enough for the market to recover, which also coincides with support at the 50 day moving average. So as long as these two lines are holding, S&P 500 is holding above this line. S&P 500 is holding nicely above the 50 day moving average, continues to be a stable market. Right now we see the S&P 500. If you take a look at the hourly for the SPX, this was the break of the highs here. We've been drawing a line for there during the week. And those who follow me have been noticing that the market's been stalling on this line. You can see resistance here of the highs there. And over the last couple of hours going into yesterday, the market's been stalling on this line. So until we clear this li line here on the hourly, we're looking at a market that is now sideways to potentially even down. More so, we can expect another hourly drop should we move below RSI 50. Now let me conclude here by taking a look at the weekly chart for the S&P 500. We can see good support here on the moving averages on the weekly. S&P 500 finding support at the 13-week moving average, which is good. And there's a possibility that with a stable market, it could actually eventually break out. Or let me put it this way. Market bulls would like the S&P 500 to clear the recent weekly closing high. The level to watch there is 2383.12. Any breakout above that price range would be very bullish. Also, if a breakout would take place, if it does, and the RSI also moves above 69.1, that's a sign of a strong market. Otherwise, failure to break out. Failure to recapture 69.1, also failure to hold the moving averages or the 13-week moving average is when we can start looking for a stronger correction lower. Take a look at the monthly. And just as we've seen with, with the other major averages in the US, as long as we are trading above 69.1, we have to give the market the benefit of the doubt. As a good example here, we can see S&P 500 moved above 69.1 here in early 2013. That movement there coincides with the move above 69.1. We stayed there for the most part until sometime here in April, June, July of 2015. So two years, this market was trending higher. Why? Because it held above 69.1. So clearly, here, bulls want to see the RSI hold above 69.1. If it can stay above 69.1, that continues to be a stable to bullish market. We shall see how it goes. Eric Mwad at Mwad.com subscribers. You've seen the some of the picks I sent you guys on Friday. Let's see how they go. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Peace and blessing.